This is a video tutorial showing you how to prepare your Illustrator files for Rhizo printing. I'm currently using Adobe Illustrator CS6. Rhizo printing is a process that is very similar to screen printing in that every time papers run through the copier, a new color is put down. First, I'm going to open up the Rhizo template, which will be made available to you. Next, I'm going to go on View, and I'm going to turn on Overprint Preview, which allows you to see how your inks interact with each other. Then I'm going to open up the Swatches panel, and as you can see, I've put in the colors that are available uh, from Color Code. These are just the Pantone solid uncoated equivalents of Rhizo inks. And you have your choice of these colors to work with. Next, we're going to go back to Window. And I'm going to turn on Attributes, which will allow you to apply overprints on your fills and strokes, and more on this later. And I'm also going to turn on the Separations Preview. This allows you to see what colors you're currently working with and you just want to make sure that you're only working with the three or four spot colors of your choice. So we're not going to be working with CMYK at all. We're just going to be using the spot colors that are available for Rhizo. I'm going to do a quick demo and this is going to be very simple, so if you plan on doing something more complicated or if you have any questions at all, please definitely get in touch with either myself or the layout team and we'll definitely do everything we can to make sure your files look good and to answer any of your questions to the best of our ability. Alright, so I'm just going to make three circles. And I'm going to color one of them with hot pink and another one with orange. And this one is going to be in blue. I'm also going to turn off the stroke for them for now. So as you can see, all the colors are on top of each other. But we know that Rhizo colors and inks are fairly transparent, so there's going to be some overprinting. So for that, I'm going to turn on the overprint fill. And as you can see, they're overprinting with each other. And this is more accurate to what is actually going to be printed out. And this is great because even though you're only using three spot colors, you can actually create even more colors from the overprinting effects of these colors. So you're pink and your blue can produce a purplish color just from overprinting. I'm going to put a stroke on this on this circle of one of my spot colors that I'm using. So let me put blue for this one and I'm going to make that fairly large. So massive stroke on this one. No pun intended. <laughs> and I'm going to put a stroke on uh, this one of pink. I don't have overprinting turned on for these strokes, so I'm going to do that right now. So this is what the effect that you're going to get for, for your strokes. So that's another thing you can explore when you're playing around with transparent spot colors. You can also do other effects with these. So let's try putting a gradient on this. I'm going to go over to my gradient panel and I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to apply a radial gradient to this one. And I'm going to be only using my spot colors, so I'm going to put a pink on this one. And let's say blue on this one. Actually, I'm going to do pink but I'm going to make that 20%. So it looks like the pink is gradating to a lighter color. So that's one effect you can do. And another thing you can do is you can also change the opacity of your colors. 
So I'm going to go over to my transparency panel and I'm going to change the transparency or opacity to 50%. So that's another thing you can do with, with, um, with this process to give you more options for your illustration. Lastly, it's a similar effect. You can also change the fill percentage. So I'm going to go up to my color panel. I'm going to pull that out. And if you go to show options over here, you can see that this is at 100%. So I can turn that to 70% fill. And that gives you more or less the same effect as changing the opacity. I'm going to keep my blue to 100%. And I want my opacity for orange to be 70%. Okay, this is where it gets kind of hairy and technical because I'm going to show you how to do knockouts in the way that I know how to do them. So let's say you don't want to have overprinting between your fill and your stroke. So what you would need to do is you need to knock out this area of overlap or overprinting. And this is how I know how to do it. There might be a better way of doing this, but this is just how I know how to do it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to edit, copy. So I'm just going to make a copy of this. You can use your shortcuts if you wish. And then I'm going to get rid of the stroke. What I want to do is I want to cut out the part of this fill that's overlapping with my stroke and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna do paste in front of my copy of the original object and I'm going to expand this I'm gonna expand both the fill and the stroke so what this is going to do is it's going to make the stroke its own thing, its own object, and it's going to make the fill its own thing or its own object. Then I'm going to ungroup the fill, the fill from the stroke and get rid of the fill. So as you can see, I only have that stroke left from when I deleted the fill and what expanding also does is because the stroke it's, is now its own thing if you click on it you see how it's no longer following a path so it essentially created a path outline on my stroke so now my stroke is actually an outlined fill so to speak I hope that's kind of makes sense so now I'm ready to knock out this extra area of overlap from my gradient filled circle so I'm gonna knock out this ooh, sorry I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock out I'm gonna knock out like all this 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 extra stuff right there how I'm gonna do that is go to window and open up your dreaded pathfinder uh, panel and I'm gonna select my outlined stroke and the gradient fill under that I'm gonna select both this way and I'm gonna do minus front so what that's gonna do is it's gonna take whatever is in front of it and it's going to subtract that from whatever I've selected that's behind it. So now I've minused the outlined stroke from this gradient fill. And then, oh, let me get out of isolation mode. Then I'm just going to edit, paste in place or paste in front it doesn't matter i'm going to do paste in front 
and I'm gonna this, this is the original object that we originally did copy on that we copied and I'm just gonna get rid of the fill on that one so that only the stroke remains and as you can see it's no longer overprinting, and that's because I've made this gradient circle fit just right inside the stroke because I essentially subtracted this much out of that gradient filled area. So if I go in closer and select this, you can see my overprint stroke is on, and if I select this, my overprint fill is on, but they're no longer overlapping because essentially the shapes are adjacent to each other at this point. Now let's do something even hairier and more complicated by, you know, say what if I wanted this stroke to knock out both this stroke and this fill from the circle under it. So that's kind of crazy. So this is how I would do it. We would have to expand both this fill, I mean this stroke and this fill again. Because if you don't do that, this is what happens. I'm gonna edit and copy and paste in front so that this stroke line is in front of the shape. If I merely take that, cop, um, selected that, and selected the object under it, and attempted to minus front, it's gonna, it's gonna minus this whole chunk of that. And we don't want that, we just want it to go clean through so I'm going to go ahead and expand this object. Expand both the fill and the stroke. And I'm also going to take, remember how we copy pasted this earlier from the original? I'm going to Well, let's just try this. So we copy pasted this from the original um, that we just did earlier. I'm gonna select that and select my, I'm gonna ungroup that. I'm gonna select that and I'm going to select just the expanded stroke from the circle because we expanded both the fill and the stroke. So. See, I ungrouped them, so now you can see that they're two different things. And actually, I, sh I want to knock them back to 70% because 70% is what they were originally at. Except when I expanded this, it went back to 100%, so that's fine. I'm just going to put it back to 70%. I'm going to take this and I'm going to just select the stroke and I'm going to minus front. So, as you can see, it's doing something weird again because it's just cutting my stroke. What we would need to do, uh, without me showing you all those ways of doing it wrong, is we would need to expand this as well. We would, as you can see, it's, it's a stroke right now. It needs to be an outlined stroke. So I'm going to do object expand I just want to expand the stroke so now see it's it changed the the paths changed from going running down the middle to running on both sides so I'm going to select that and I'm going to select the stroke and minus front so now it's cutting clean across the stroke I want it to cut through this circle as well, so I'm going to need to do the same thing, which is edit, copy, paste in front, but because I don't remember copying something else, I should just be able to paste it in front 
and it would still be whatever we pasted in front earlier. And then I'm going to object expand the stroke. So now it's expanded. I'm going to select that, then select this orange fill, and I'm going to minus front. So as you can see, this blue is now going clean through my orange fill and my pink stroke. So basically what I've done is knocked out, knocked it out right there. It's been knocked out so that there won't be any overprinting going on in this area. So that's how you get rid of overprinting is by using the Pathfinder tool. And that's how I know how to do it. All right. I'm going to also show you what the separations are going to look like because that's really useful and helpful in trying to figure out what we're going to be providing to the printer and what the screen, so to speak, will look like. And you don't have to do this. The layout team will do this for you because we're going to be working with the printers. So we're going to be providing them with whatever they need to get the job done. But for your personal uh, learning pleasure, I'm going to show you how, how it's going to go from here.